Good morning, everyone. Glad you're here. Oh, I just realized I have forgotten my special um, mic, so hopefully you can hear me. Um, maybe the sound won't sound any different at all, so uh, maybe the mic doesn't matter. Welcome from, <clears throat> excuse me, all over. Um, Aisha's here from Scotland and California, Texas. Um, Mary from Wisconsin, who says her Amaz her credit card has been charged for my book, so maybe Amazon will bring it. That's one way to look, whether it's on its way, I guess. Good morning, Harold from Canada, west coast of Canada. Um, Whidbey Island, it's raining. Hi, Jocelyn. Maryland. Um, Linda has her book. She's in Maine. Lynn is here from Edinburgh. Hi, Lynn. Um, Betsy from Kansas City. Sarah Sweat from a cool, cloudy Weaverly morning in Moscow, Idaho. Uh, let's see. And Florida. You guys in Florida have gotten some hammering this year. I'm real sorry, Judith. Um, Cool. Ginger's got her book coming. Terry from BC, Canada. Nan's here from New York. Welcome, everyone. Um, Athens. Fantastic. Ah, and Eva from Spain. Um, it's great to see you all. It feels like two weeks ago. <laughs> two weeks ago when I last did this feels like 400 years ago to you too. I mean, it really, a lot has happened in the last two weeks, I think. Um, anyway, uh, we are still here and we are still weaving, so that is good. Barbara's here from Bainbridge. Um, Blue Moon Guitars from Oklahoma. Fantastic. Ottawa, Canada. Um, uh, Christine, I'm sorry your book is not coming for a while, but that's okay. It will still be the same when you get it in January. Uh, Indianapolis, Kansas City, Texas. Um, some of you have gotten your book. Thanks for mentioning the book, by the way. I, I appreciate it, you all. Um, I realized that pretty much everything I've talked about for the last eight months has been this book and now it's here so you can hear me talk about other things for a while. Um, Idaho, you're welcome Dinah. Um, glad you got the book and the book plate. So I'm still working on this um, crazy uh, thing here. Let's see if I can do this right. I'm still working on this crazy thing. Um, it's called, uh, it'll probably be called hand basket, but it's from that little saying, um, I was told they're um, going to hell in a hand basket. So the thing is going to say I was told there would be a hand basket and it's a picture of, it's woven sideways. So this is a foot and it's a picture of a basket tipping over with a person falling out. It's for fun. I've enjoyed it a lot. So I'm going to work on it some more. And um, it has a ways to go, obviously. Um, Barbara, I don't think the post office in the U.S. will be delivering on Veterans Day. Although they have delivered to me on Sunday, so who knows? Um, you might get lucky. Um, fantastic. Sorry, that was my last bit of tea. Um, I'm ready to go now. Uh, so this, let's go to, let's move this out of the way. Maybe I'll put it up here so that my face isn't in the way. Um, I keep moving where the camera is, so I apologize if I end up like this. Uh, so this is the double set piece, and um, most of you have seen it, but uh, it looks like, here's the cartoon. So there's uh, flames around the edge, and this is a basket, and a little person, and this is a foot, and some text. 
and I'm calling it my pandemic diaries series. Uh, this is number two, so I don't know if there'll be more than that, but uh, anyway, uh, it's a double set piece and I know I've talked about that a lot, so I won't explain it again, but uh, if you're new, if you go back a few episodes, episodes, <laughs> you'll um, get a better picture of this thing. I started the text yesterday, so um, I'm not a fantastic text weaver. I haven't spent much time weaving text, so this will be a good learning experience, hopefully not with capital letters. Uh, I wrote the text as if it was handwritten, so I, I want it to look a little wonky, which is on purpose. That's a good design tip. If you're not sure about something, make it look a little wonky on purpose. And uh, I couldn't decide whether to, I'm going to um, bring this in a little bit. I couldn't decide whether to make the eight EPI go all the way up to the letters or put a border around it of 16 EPI. And obviously I decided to try the border with the 16 EPI because I was afraid the letters would get swallowed up by the fuzzier um, yarn and I didn't want to make the letters bigger. However, it, it's going to mean a lot more weaving uh, to um, complete this. If I put 16 EPI all the way around this border, it's going to be a lot of weaving. So we'll see how I do with that. Um, I would say that 8 EPI is easily four times faster than the 16 EPI. Even with my little uh, cheater shed stick here. I know some of you are talking about leashes and stuff, and no, I haven't actually put leashes on here, which I could. The little stick works pretty well. It's a lot of shed stick work. It's probably also somewhat boring to watch, but hopefully you have your own weaving to work on. So going back, I have to pick the shed. I want to fill this in so there's a nice little diagonal. And then this little cross of the T is going to go over where that um, lighter color is. So I need to fill that in a little bit. And as in all things tapestry, really the best way to do that would be to fill all of this in all the way until it's level here. Or I could do a little cut back. That would not be a bad idea. Let's do that. A cut back or a lazy line is often used in a situation where you want to cut a solid color and leave it and finish. So I want to finish this area later. So I can just leave a little diagonal line here. And fill that this in that way and then when I come back and do this part I will be able to um, fill in that angle. For those of you who have my Warp and Weft class, I just put a week or two ago, two weeks ago maybe, a new, a whole new section and there's a whole video about cutbacks in there. So if you haven't been back to your class for a while, you may be pleasantly surprised. I did not, it's a new video, I didn't have a video about cutbacks. And there's five other videos about angles in there, so. <clears throat> if you missed the news that I finally finished that, it's done. Um. <clears throat> Of course, I'm having trouble seeing this. Okay, it is this shed. Um, hold on. Yep. 
I don't have new glasses yet. So see how I'm making a little, I'm just leaving a little angle there and I will fill that in later. Because this is, why I'm doing that is this is at an angle and I didn't want to keep weaving eccentrically here. I wanted to keep this line flat and it might be a little deceiving to you because I have the camera off to the side so it's at an angle. If I turn this loom anymore, I'll have even more trouble seeing <laughs> what I'm doing. Thanks, Ellen. Hi from Michigan. Glad you got my book. Hi, Anne Marie from New Jersey. Pretty sure today's a federal holiday, you guys. I don't think we'll get mail today in the United States. And everyone, if you have forgotten it's Veterans Day, please give your thanks to all of our amazing veterans. We owe them a lot. <laughs> Crystal's having yarn paralysis. Yeah, that's a hard one. Um, you'll get there, Crystal, though. Uh, Kate, it's in part two of Warp and Weft. It's um, a whole new angle section. When I was talking about the cutbacks, that's also in there. <clears throat> Okay, let's see here. My whole goal of doing this was to get this over so I could make the top of this T come up. The thing with this little um, shed rod is I always forget which shed it's in. It's not that hard. I'm always, you know, going the same direction on the same section, but apparently I've not. I have trouble remembering and then I don't use it, but it would be faster if I remembered. And Book lunch was fun. Thanks, you all. So many of you were there. I did it twice, and there are two videos up now. I am um, finishing. I will have closed captioning for one of the videos up um, probably later this afternoon. I'm not going to spend a lot of time making sure it's perfect, but if you need the closed captions, they'll be available for the November 7 um, video. But the videos are up on my website under, if you go to navigation, look under books. The, um, it says book launch. So if you wanted to watch, I talked about um, the making of the book, which was actually really fun. I learned a lot. No, I'm not going to write another book this year. 2021 is not a book writing year. Okay. Let's see. So... I'm nervous because Sarah Sweat is on today and she is the freaking master of um, weaving letters. Have you If you've seen her rough copy pieces, you should go to her website if you haven't. Um, they're all, it's, uh, she wove a book that she wrote and, uh, or some of the text from a book she wrote, a novel. And um, it's enchanting and the letters are quite amazing, so. I've not had anything like that kind of practice in weaving letters. Not that it matters. It's okay. We all learn with practice. Okay, let's fill in this side a little bit. So, you know, the thing about tapestry is you have to weave it from the bottom up, so you are, I'm always filling in 
oh, I want to work on this area, but I have to finish this area first. So that's just how it goes. Look at me remembering to use my shed stick. I wish you guys were here in my studio because I feel like I'm talking to myself a little bit and it's kind of weird some days. You'll notice I did put up Christmas lights. We're just calling them, uh, we're stuck at home and we need cheery things maybe. How about that? Uh, yes, Christine, 2021 is a die class year. Um, and a new design class year. So we will have both of those things for sure in uh, 2021. Who knows what will happen in 2021, but I will be writing another book. Oh, thanks, Kate. I'm glad the book launch was fun. <laughs> Sarah, good point. Sarah says, geez, Rebecca. Uh, they're just shapes, which is an excellent point. They're just shapes. It is true. But letters are kind of complicated shapes. Honestly, I mean, it's not like you're waving a square or... I guess the little daisies are also just shapes, but I don't know. Letters, I think because we want to read them, sometimes they feel a little more intimidating. Uh, I didn't, Marsha, I didn't post, she asked if I post a video of me warping this project. I did not. I don't believe I posted a video of me warping. Um, that would be good, though. Maybe uh, one day when I'm ready to warp another loom, I can do that on Change the Shed. That would be kind of fun. Okay, I'm going to fill this in a little bit. Oh, look at that. See, there's a float right there. You can actually see that. Um... What did I want to do with that? Over, under, over, under, right? You just have to make it go over, under. It goes over there and under here. I just split that warp. All right, now. Come back. So I kind of like the effect of where the two sets meet. Those of you who've played with double sets, I like using, excuse me, sorry, a fuzzier yarn for the wider set because it really sort of covers up that edge and um, the fuzziness. I think lends a good, in this case anyway, lends a nice little touch. It also means that where this Weaver's Bazaar is meeting the Harrisville, it's fuzzy enough to fill in that little gap. I did, I saw this right here, a few at a few points if there's going to be a bit of a slit, I will bring the thinner weft over right there you can just barely see it um, to hook that together to basically sew the slit um, i don't have any intention of actually stitching this slit um, partly because it's only going to be a little bit longer than this but that little trick i'll probably do it one more time up here helps join that all together and because uh, this is such a fine weft compared to this you'll never see it Sarah's shapes look like they come off of a typewriter, says Barbara. I think they did come off of a typewriter, Barbara. I think she uh, used uh, an actual typewriter and copied those shapes. I see what you mean, though. They look like they were actually typed. They're so regular. Uh, okay. Oh, good point, Sarah. Um, letter shapes are really fun to play, a place to play with hills and valleys and watch what a difference they make. So that um, angles update that I put in the Warp and Weft class has a whole bunch of stuff about hills and valleys. It's in part two of Warp and Weft. And uh, right there, see how that's even? Right there, I could bring that across. Um, it's a great way to practice hills and valleys. So uh, probably next week I'll be up to something that has a little hill and I can show you that. But I can also show you how I use um, eccentric 
weaving often to smooth out the tops. Some of that I learned from watching Sarah weave letters. Let's see, how much longer? I think that one needs to end. This is the voices in my head that you people are now unfortunately having to listen to. <laughs> Wrong shed there. You probably did not want to listen to the voices in my head, but maybe you do, here you are. Right, this is where I can do that little So when I come back here, I'm going to grab this warp and hook that in. Just to hold that little slit together. I'm just going to put that in enough to hold it and then I can put one more of this in. tricky to keep that from pulling over. Oh, tapestry. What a mistress you are. Um, and he's asking if there's anyone else from Hungary. So if you're listening and you are from Hungary, pipe up um, and let her know. I don't know of anyone, Aniki, but um, there could be somebody. That would be very cool. All right, uh, all right, I'm gonna put this to the back because I want that to be the end of a T. Hey, that looks like a T, right? It's a, you know, sideways and wonky, but let's, let's see. If y'all weren't watching, this is what I would do, so. New piece of this color. You have to close your shed for the 16 EPI. All right, in this case, Do, 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 do. do we need music? I started watching Franklin Habits um, Patreon. He started a Patreon with um, uh, with uh, lockdown, and he does these things where he shows his workroom, which is quite cool. It was actually sort of the initial idea for Change the Shed, but he just puts on music and works, and so um, he, you don't have to listen to him talking like you're listening to me. But he's always playing music, and so I'm like, oh, maybe we need music. I, I won't make you listen to music, but okay. I'm gonna add another piece in here. I'm nervous because I'm not actually sure this is the right shed. Y'all are making me nervous. Let's see, we'll know here though. Yep, that is the right shed. Thank goodness. And here's how I knew. So let me open this. So here's the open shed. This is going to go this way in this shed, and this is going to weave that way. So I wanted meet and separate, and that's how I knew it was right. I had to think back, you know, only one <laughs> shed to get this in the right way. Sometimes I guess wrong. And I didn't want to be embarrassed today. Uh, let's see. So now the trick, now that I decided to do that cutback, the trick is to make sure that I get my relays nicely in there because I don't actually want the cutback to show in this case so much. It probably will a little bit, but I don't really want that diagonal line to show and you might in some cases want it to show. Let's see, that is... Not cool, not cool. 16 EPI is so fiddly. You guys, I don't know how 
like Kathy Todd Hooker who weaves at crazy tiny sets, like sometimes 32, which is twice this, 32. How does she do that? 16 is my limit. I'm just telling you right now. Oh, it's totally the end of the road for me. I, I don't think I'll, I'm not a miniaturist. There is somebody, I don't think she's on this call, but um, there is somebody who is working through the classes who is a miniaturist wanting to make little tiny things. And she did make some just min, like minuscule little um, tapestries for, I think she was using them in a dollhouse, which is also something that, come to think of it, that is something uh, Franklin Habit's current project is a dollhouse and he's making historical textiles for it. It's super fascinating. Okay, I really can't see this, sorry you all. There we go. Oh, the joys of getting older. Hopefully next week, I will be back next week, uh, which is the 18th. And hopefully by next week, I'll have more of these letters woven so we can see how that turns out. Um, Yeah, Kate says she's doing the doubled set a different way. You can totally do it the way you're talking about, Kate. Um, warping it for 16 EPI and then... Um, so I put the heddles for 8 EPI because I thought more of the piece would be at 8 EPI, but honestly, it would have been faster if I put the heddles on for 16 and then wove over 2 for the 8. So that is a very smart thing. Um, <laughs> thanks, Crystal. I appreciate you listening to my chatter. Um, let's see. Okay. <laughs> Marsha just found my petrified forest thing. So Marsha, I have a tip for you. If you like that blog post, um, oh, it might be linked in the blog post. If you go to my website under, where is it? It might be under the shop tab, but look down. It says PEFO. Look for that. Anyway, the, I made a little book on blurb. And you can go to Blurb and look at all the pages in the book. Um, so if you want to see um, more commentary and stuff about that project, that book is kind of fun. And I just made it so you could look at the whole thing on, on Blurb, which is a self-publishing company. Um, so you don't have to buy it. You can just look at all the uh, pictures. It's kind of like the blog post. Maybe that's silly. I don't know. Um, okay. So we've done a T. This is an I. Seems like the I should have a little presence, right? It should be a little bit fatter, maybe. It is pretty straight. Oh, see, here I go again, forgetting that I have a shed rod to help me. Um, I have also considered getting another shedding mechanism from Shacked. And I haven't done it, but... That would be the other way to speed this up. Actually, it might be super smart. <laughs> um, I could put a second shedding mechanism on this loom with the handle on the other side and put the heddles on at 16. I think it would work great. Um, I would roll this down so I would have a longer warp, of course. But um... <laughs> where's my shed stick? It's up here. All right. Use the equipment to your advantage. There's just something about picking the shed, especially like late at night or early in the morning, just sitting here and like picking it with my... It's been a hard couple of weeks, y'all, in the United States. And just sitting here and picking the warps with a shed stick is actually very calming. So that's one of the other reasons why I feel like um, it's quite all right to just uh, do it the slow way. I do most of my little tiny things this way, but because they're small, they don't take so long. Okay. I think that that little cutback is going to be fine. I can't even see it, although you realize I can't see very well, but... Um, 
I don't see it in there, so that's that's good because often light colors um, cutbacks are pretty evident. Let's go one more. And then we will look at putting in, ah, how often do you guys do that? Wrong shed. At least I didn't create a float, so it pulled out and I knew it was the wrong one. would like that a little bit slanted so I'm actually going to go a little farther here summer asks um, are there any real differences in weaving at a very small set other than it's just taking longer um, I think the answer would be, for me, in terms of technique, no, but in terms of materials, yes, there are differences. So um, I think the techniques are all the same. You all can correct me if you are thinking of something I'm not thinking of, but I would say the techniques are all the same, but the... Um, materials um, so much finer thread this weavers bizarre I feel like when you're weaving at a very close set that every little bit shows whereas if you have a chunkier weft and you're weaving at a, a wider set like eight or even wider um, there's bigger margin of error I just think that everything that you do at 16 EPI is going to be evident in the weaving, especially with a yarn like Weaver's Bazaar. This yarn is um, super slick for wool. It's not fuzzy. It's a little fuzzy, but it really shows everything, which means it's really beautiful, but... Um, I'm going to go there so that this is a valley thread on the turn. That is probably impossible for you to see, but I will figure out a way for you to see that better when I'm weaving letters. So last thing, this is the color I'm using for the letters. It is actually a really deep green. And I actually chose it before I decided to make this green, but I think it kind of mirrors the colors there so let's see am I gonna do how am I gonna do this so I built up I don't know if you saw that I built I went here and then back and then here and then back and then here and then back maybe I did one more than that to make this line slightly slanted and now I'm going to just stick in the eye. I am good. That's why I was debating about whether I was going to put this in in the center or. Oh, it looks like maybe my video has frozen. I hope y'all are still there. Um. Yeah, it looks like you are. Okay, so this is how I will do the eye. Uh, two, strand on each side, meet and separate. And I'm going to make it fatter than that T, so we get to see that. Next week, I will be here on Wednesday. The week after that is Thanksgiving, so I don't think I will be here that week. Um, life changes a lot. Actually, it doesn't change a lot when you're at home, but let's see if I can make this come back. Nope. For whatever reason, my webcam is frozen. Hold on. My FaceTime camera. Nope. 
well. That's okay, you all. I don't know. It looks like this camera is working, so I'm not sure what's happening with my video feed, but um, I am glad that you all made it. And let's see if I can. I'm glad you all made it. And um, thanks for watching me weave this crazy little piece. And um, I hope you enjoy the book and that you have a great week. And I'll be back next week on Wednesday, the 18th. Thanks, you guys. Weave away and use, um, if you, I do check the Change the Shed hashtag, especially on Instagram. Facebook doesn't like um, hashtags much, but post your stuff. And I love to see it. So use that change the shed right there. Oh, God. Okay. At the top corner of your screen, it says hashtag change the shed. If you want to share what you're doing. Thanks, you guys. Have a great week. It's been uh, fun to hang out with you again. And I will keep working on this. And you can see where I am next week. <laughs>